Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of Ray of All Trades. We have another steel MS460 on the bench today. Missing the bar and chain. The person who brought it to me knows quite a bit about saws. Basically he was saying that the saw was, uh, the idle was drastically changing up and down doing some really weird items uh, running wise and it really sounded like he was describing a vacuum leak. I don't have the bar and chain for it and based on his description I really don't want to run it any longer than what he's already has. He said he purchased this used from somebody who got it at auction from Fairfax County. Apparently the guy put an aftermarket cylinder and kit on it and it looks like the front muffler cover. Something has gone wrong with it. He only had it running for less than a week and sounds like it honestly sounds like the seals have gone bad or the gasket wasn't uh, set right or something wrong. But let's just do some prepping areas on it. Looks like the uh, OEM air filter. Based on the other parts, I'm going to say that was probably the original air filter. Minimal amount of dirt, so obviously you didn't have a long, run, long of a run time. Let's go ahead and get the uh, cover off of it, start taking a better peek around. You never know what you're going to get when you're buying something used, especially when somebody else rebuilt it. I haven't found the smoking gun yet to be able to tell if uh, if it was the components. bad build. Don't know enough yet to see what's going on. I'm not going to pull that carburetor completely out because my intention is to do a vacuum and pressure test on it. Full of fuel. I'm going to get it cleaned out. That chair is really full of fuel. Good looking fuel too, so that wasn't our problem. And like I said, the guy who runs these, he runs saws every single day. So, I guarantee it wasn't that big of a problem. Nice full wrap handle on this thing. It's a county saw. Really good chance that somebody straight gassed it is how it ended up uh, getting a brand new piston and cylinder. Because first off, Fairfax County buys really nice stuff and takes really good care of their stuff. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, somebody straight gassed it. They went to auction. That is wild. Somebody cut half of the head off of that. Okay. This way, that's the only way that this thing ended up in my hands. Plug reads pretty good. I'm guessing he didn't uh, run it very long when it started acting up. Okay, yep, brand new piston cylinder, that does not look OEM, 
Looking at the intake boot. Looking for any kind of a leak. Fancy headlamp on here. Down inside for any kind of a tear or anything like that on that intake boot. That's the most common problem with these. Piston looks completely. Well, from this angle, it looks really clean. It does have a uh, tank breather on it. It doesn't appear to be clogged. I haven't tried to push any kind of air through it. It doesn't appear to be clogged. Well, we may have found our problem. Okay. We're going to verify it with a uh, vacuum test, vacuum and pressure test, but right down in there, down in here, extremely wet, right near this base gasket. Um, and yep. And it's loose. Yep, so this right here was definitely the fault of the builder. Not the parts. Anyway, hopefully the guy who's watching this has an opportunity to uh, see what just transpired and make it right. Because uh, he sold it for a pretty good, pretty good price. Um, I don't mean like a cheap price. I mean, he charged, uh, charged me quite a bit of money for it. And yep, that one was loose too. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm actually looking at the back side now. Let's see if I can get you zoomed out. There you go. Yep, that one, super loose. That one, completely loose. And that one, completely loose. Yeah. All right. Well, we know what the problem is. Um, I'm gonna give uh, give my buddy a call and see what he wants to do as far as uh, getting this thing resealed. But I don't even have to do a vacuum test on it now. I know it's gonna fail. Um, you have to crisscross pattern these. I have to look at the exact torque specs specifications for it. But I can tell you that by hand um, with Loctite. These things are supposed to be as tight as I can possibly get them in a crisscross pattern. Um, and I always use a sealer on there, so I'm hoping that they've got a regular gasket on it. The question is, with it running lean like that, did it score the... Uh, did it score the piston? So, hopefully, if you caught it soon enough, all we're looking at is a... Um, you know, I reseal and put it back together. Just super disappointing. That somebody would go through all that trouble and build it incorrectly. It really makes me want to tear it completely down and check the uh, check the seals, make sure they were set right. Check the rings, make sure they were right. Check the uh, wrist pin clamps make sure that they're not going to come flying apart um, I mean you mess up on a rookie mistake like that you just I don't know the person who did it so I just have to assume that you missed something as, as easy as that there's a pretty good chance you messed up some else so I mean we've all got bad days but yep all right, so that screw's completely out. Well, not completely out, but it was backed out halfway. This thing is making me sick to my stomach. I'm fairly confident i got to rebuild the whole thing. And based on the... Uh, 
debris here versus the debris that I saw up top. Whoever built it also didn't clean all that out either. Because they don't match. Nice part is I don't see any scoring. Um, <laughs> you guys can see that piston, or excuse me, cylinder moving up and down when I do this. That's criminal. Um, I mean, I see vertical lines, but that what it looks like is oil to me. You know, just running up and down on the oil. And it's definitely an aftermarket piston cylinder. All right. Let me give him a call, see what he wants to do. Um, we very likely can just clean this thing up and reseal it and put it back together. I'd like to find out if that's what he wants to do, though, before we get too far. I, I really want to pull the whole cylinder off and just check the rest of his settings. So I'll be back with you guys soon. Okay, rather than... Uh, bring it back to the guy that did an awful job building it um, he wants me to go ahead and tear this thing down so my first thing is I want to get it completely clean so I'm gonna be spraying power washing uh, all the components off I'm gonna be pulling the piston and cylinder so I don't care about getting water in it because I'm going straight after it and taking it and cleaning it all out getting this stuff laid out to dry obviously the most important part is the motor and okay, my buddy said it was a uh, young kid who uh, I guess bought it trying to make a couple bucks um, so he's definitely not going back to him to buy anything else um, but he also because I'm going to try to recoup on them either. So, I mean, accidents happen, right? But, uh, guys, if you want to make a name for yourself repairing stuff, tell them if they've got a problem to bring it back to you. Because you'd rather be the one to fix it than uh, have somebody else find your screw ups, right? We all screw up, we all learn. But give them the peace of mind to bring it back to you, and you'll develop a customer for life when you do that. Let them know that they can trust you. Just looking in the cylinder see if there's any kind of damage I don't see anything um, he said he got a quarter of a tank of gas in this thing before it before this happened he was on the original tank first tank of gas that's so sad um, I, was, I don't know if this dirt came in there from me power washing or from the other person. I'm just going to assume that they did it correctly. And I'm looking for the uh, steel markings to see if this is aftermarket or uh, So, uh, you can blow air down in there. What you're doing though is you're going to push the dirt and stuff into those bearings. I just want them to get cleaned out. So we're just going to turn it upside down and let it drain. It's like a steel 7 room sprocket on it. 3 8 Appears to be by the coloration. Appears to be the uh, OEM 
drum, clutch drum. There's nothing wrong with making money off of uh, people repairing stuff. Um, I mean, I've made my share, yep, 387. Um, but you want to make a name for yourself. Like I said, tell them if they have a problem to come back and see you. Um, and, you know, build a customer base. Let that finish draining out. Okay. For the flywheel side, comes off regular counterclockwise. Uh, 9 16 14 millimeter. That was a little on the easy side, but they're not always hard to come off of there. So I'm just right now trying to retrace steps to see what all was touched to verify it was installed correctly. What I like to do is put the nut back on, take a really small hammer, try to pull out on the flywheel with my hand. Pull the coil off so I can get a better look at it. I'm used to that flywheel generally popping off by now. As tight as that is, I know that that person wasn't in there. Two T27s. out the way. So what I don't like, um, now this wouldn't have been from the, in, the original guy who installed it, because uh, he didn't do this part. Should have, but he didn't. Um, but these OEM seals, when you see oil and uh, gas inside this area, it's almost always because this seal leaked. Um, so, and they do leak, and they will run lean, and um, they will cause a bunch of problems. But when you see, like I said, when you see all this oil and stuff in here, it's usually because this seal is bad, and if you're changing this one, you will always change the other one. You change them out in pairs, not just one. And it's just because they have the same amount of abuse. That's why you're changing them that way. It's not that one has nothing to do with the other. It's just because they have the same amount of abuse. This one, the piston's trying to move. Let me put the hammer handle back behind it so it has something to hit against. Okay. So where that guy's battery died on me. Anyway, loosen this up. I had to wedge that uh, with a block of wood. I had to wedge that piston to get this clutch off of here. 
clutch isn't in bad shape. The nut always faces out so you can tighten it. Ring the, the embossed part faces out. The uh, recessed part faces in on the washer. Then your oil drive gear comes off next. The teeth facing in. And you have a snap ring below that. And with the quantity of debris I see in here, the, either the oil pump is leaking really bad, or this other gasket was also bad. I just have three on the two. I think the oil pump only has two. Just stuck. Yep, yeah, there we go. Usually you have to take this cover off to get this oil pump out, and I'm fairly confident I need to again. Let's pull off the cover. Take that off. Does that give me access? There we go. Yeah, so either that was leaking profusely, which uh, this uh, lines up with an o-ring right there and it could have been it could have been leaking profusely um, let's pull the brake band out of my way so I can try to show you guys a little bit better what I'm looking at I think that had a screw holding that brake band in place in place. It did. It was a screw holding that thing in place. Well, maybe by the time I've got to everything, everybody's already pulled them out and lost them. <clears throat> so, there is an O-ring here. And that is uh, what this pump seals up against. If that O-ring is leaking, not an O-ring. It's a it's a rubber gasket. Um, if that's if that's leaking, then you'll get all this oil uh, all over the place. It'll make a giant mess. But what I was trying to get to on this side originally was this seal back here. That's the other side of the crank seal. It too will do this. When on this side of the saw, you have to decide was it this was or was it that that was actually leaking. Um, I'm already going to be buying that that seal and the seal on the other side. So. Anyway, got to work some parts. Um, next time you guys see me, it'll probably be a couple minutes as far as the video goes. But as far as uh, I'm concerned, it's probably going to be um, a few days or a week or so before I'm back to it. So hopefully I remember where all the parts go. So, y'all stay with me. Hey there, viewers. Welcome back. We received some of our parts. Did the, uh, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I just got back. And so I'm hoping that these parts are right. See, this should be the crank seal kit. Farmer Tech brand for the steel MS460. 
uh, says replaces 9640-0030, excuse me, 1355. Had really heard really good things about Farmer Tech. Next one is a uh, another made in China product. 52 millimeter 460 cylinder uh, dot 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 e filter for uh, 1128 Let's see what they gave us. Remember this uh, what I'm replacing was a Chinese aftermarket cylinder that just wasn't installed properly. It looks like new oil line, new set of rings, fuel filter, oil filter, and decomp lever. New piston. New wrist pin. New wrist pin uh, keepers. There's a little bitty burr right there. You guys see that a little small burr right there on the bottom in the casting and uh, it obviously um, was turned down um, so I mean it's not going to touch anything but I just don't like the way that it's hanging out there almost like a spot for carbon or something to build up on so I'm going to just uh, Take a little Dremel and just knock that one little barb off of there. Give me just a second. I'm gonna get this unwrapped. So when I'm blowing air through this to knock all this junk out of here, it has a chance to leave all the passages and doesn't get stuck in the wrapper. Just knock some of the edge off of there. I'm not trying to port it or anything like that. And it was cheaper for me to buy the entire kit than it was just to buy the few pieces that I needed. Okay, let's work on getting these seals out. One on this side, one on the other side. These can be a little bit tough. A lot of people will just uh, punch a hole, put a screw in there, it's like a drywall screw, and then pry it out. I like to try to grab them if I can with a pick. Um, if they move, if they don't, then obviously I go back to that screw and pry method. A little assortment of picks. See if any of them cause it to move. Does not appear to be moving at all. So one of the things you can do occasionally is tap down on one side and cause the other side to push up. side pushed in okay. 
Let's see if I can just pop a hole in this thing. There's a little bit of a hole. I'll find a small screw to put in there. I think this drywall screw is a little bit too aggressive, but let's see if it'll work. It worked. Took it out like it was supposed to. It felt like it was going to be a little bit too aggressive, but I guess not. So, got lucky. Watch one seal out. Let's work on the other side. Let's try that same method again. At least this side's got a much bigger seal on it. Punch a little hole. I don't want to go too deep with that. right out. Let's clean that edge up. Let's match the seal up with a socket. like that. I'm going to hit it, hammer it till it's just flat. There we go. It's sitting flush. Take your time, otherwise you might end up having to put another seal in there. Get your snap ring back on. So the first socket I used was a 7 8 this socket is a 9 16 I tried using a power washer to clean most of this out of here and uh, it just would not come clean. It's like it's uh, caked on or bonded on. It came from Fairfax County. I'm kind of curious if this was used in fires. Um, it does have a hickory charred smoke to it. and Because uh, I, I love working on a clean saw as much as the next guy. Um, this one is just, it's its fighting me tooth and nail trying to come clean. Everything I try to clean on it just fights me. Let's go ahead and get the piston changed out. Since we've got them, I want to put the whole set in. Like I said, I don't know exactly what the other person did. 
So pull one of the keepers out. Not that. Check the fuel. Uh, excuse me. Uh, impulse line while you're in here. Make sure there's a there's a hole down here inside the body. There's a hole down here inside the body. It's a little um, barb that sticks into the crankcase. It builds in builds in. Uh, pulls vacuum and pressure through here. That's what comes up through this, through this line, out the impulse line to the carburetor. It makes the fuel pump go up and down, draws fuel from the tank. If anybody's wondering how it pulled fuel into the tank, or from the tank into the carburetor, that's how it works. What I'm not seeing, they did not give me a new uh, roller bearing for here. Let's put some uh, oil in that one. So, there's an arrow on top of your piston. It always faces towards the front or towards the exhaust. Let me back you guys out a little bit so you can see better. That arrow always faces towards the front or faces towards the exhaust. Um, you have these keepers that uh, come with it. The, the style like I took off there that was basically like a came around in a circle and they had these two barbs coming in. I don't like those. Um, they have a tendency to uh, come apart. I don't know if they get weighted or what occurs, but one like this um, and even some people even cut that little barb off of there, the one that's hanging hanging down just to make sure that it doesn't have any excess weight flying around. It has nothing to do with the weight of the uh, saw being too heavy. What it has to do with is the weight um, of the spring opening itself or collapsing itself at the wrong time and then that keeper falling out. And it's not that the keeper is gonna um, fall out and let the piston come flying out because it's not that's not gonna happen. What's going to happen is that little piece of wire is going to get stuck in your chamber and it's going to score your cylinder all up. So anyway, after you get your keeper in, spin it so that that barb is coming from the top. So you always want that uh, barb at the top or you want the opening at the top. Basically it has to do with um, uh, how it's being, uh, the compression stroke powering down. So I've got one side in. I'm going to set the connecting rod up between the piston. I'm going to kick myself for not opening this up first. This is your wrist pin. Okay. That lubed up. So if you're connecting rod and that roller bearing that I uh, didn't get a new one of, but a lot of, a lot of kits come with those, um, is all lined up. You should be able to just slide this in. It's, it's going to have some friction, but just slide it through until it's joined up. And then that clip that we just put in is going to stop it from going all the way through. Slide that pin up until you hit that other one, that other keeper. So this keeper, be very careful because for whatever reason the second one always likes to go flying. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the angle or what. I'll put in the side that doesn't have the spot that you can grab. Grab that bar and you're going to twist it in and then if it doesn't line up perfectly on your first shot well, that's an odd one um, anyway grab it and spin it in the direction that would keep it from falling out until it's all the way back up to the top was in that shot or not. No, 
Yep, looks pretty good. All right, so looking at so looking at this piston, I don't know if you guys can see. There's a pin right there. That pin is on the top half of that groove. I hope I turn the light away. That pin's on the top half of that groove. So there's a piston ring that kind of mirrors that. You can see that there's a, a, a cutout on the ring itself. Okay, so basically the, the bottom of this ring is uh, sticks out further than the top of this ring. And there's a pin here. There's a pin here, and then there's a pin over here on this side. Those are designed to keep these grooves from hitting those holes inside the cylinder and catching and snagging and uh, basically breaking them because these are extremely hard. So, what you do, keep them clean, you soap them up with WD-40. I'm working the ring into the groove be very careful because they will break on you there's one if you don't have enough WD-40 on there put more on just drop it down on one side just get it started slowly put it on there there's a ring expansion tool it looks like a pair of duckbill pliers it's made for this basically uh, separates it evenly um, I just don't have a set maybe I can put that on my Christmas wish list this year and I'm just using that as a cleaner clean my dirty paw prints off of there So, a product called Three Bond, greatest stuff since sliced bread. Um, it is a uh, fuel resistant, works as an excellent gasket. Um, you can actually omit the uh, base gasket if you wanted to. Um, we're going to put this on. This is a work saw, so we really don't want that high of compression if we can uh, uh, avoid it. But one tube will last you a really long time. I'll link it in the description, um, but it's worth its weight in gold. So this gasket has a has a funny shape to it. It's um, kind of I don't know how to describe it. It's flat, flat, and then it has these rounded edges here. Um, it goes on that way to go over the piston to lock it down. If you try to put it on that way, it's not. If you try to put it on that way, it's not going to work. So just dry fit it if you have to to check it ahead of time I only want a thin coating and um, I'm going to get to that point as soon as I'm done lathering this thing up um, I'm going to smear it around and wipe off the excess Get rid of any kind of strings. We're going to push this through that direction. And then it's going to turn to sit down on the base.
everything lined up. Okay, we want to make sure that these rings are lined up with those pins. They're not pushed past it. This style has a crown to it, so you usually don't have to use a ring compressor to get this one, but if you uh, wanted to, you could. Let's just soap up the cylinder a little bit, just to make sure everything slides in smoothly. And don't do what I did and get the BD-40 on the outside. Leave that part up and spray off my excess around the outside. You don't want oil back there. That's no no. Alright. Should be able to. actually wants a ring compressor. I'm sure I could have got it without it, but uh, that would make it easier on this job. Just line up your rings and those two grooves. Once they're compressed like this, you're going to loosen up just enough to let it slide down as the cylinder is coming down. So I'm lining this up. The square goes to the front. The round hole goes towards the carburetor. This is the way we took it off. Ring compressor, slide this down. Try to look and see if your gasket's still lined up. Mine shifted a little bit. There you go. Slide your cylinder down until it makes contact. Now let's put some head bolts in. First guy should have done. Honestly, it would have. They don't necessarily need Loctite to not come out. Um, but you know, if you had put Loctite on it, would have lasted a little bit longer. And I believe most people are going to tell you that they use Loctite on those. A lot of people will actually put a T-handle on here. Or a, uh, something like that. Just to make sure that they can get enough grip on it. I found that these uh, screwdrivers that, are, that have a decent grip to them about right. 
And when you think you got it tight enough and correct, do it again. There we go. Right, let's go ahead and put in the <coughs> excuse me. Go ahead and put in the compression release. It's got a gasket on it, so there's no reason to uh, put anything other than than the gasket. Half inch deep well socket. myself because I didn't take the handle off tried to play the system and I lost Yes, as I had I put it on before I put the cylinder on, I could have got away with it. I bet you there's a couple of y'all out there watching that said, haha, he just messed up. Saw it, saw it before I did, right? I think I heard you yelling at me. I'm not going to swear to it. I'm always scared of breaking those things. I don't want them too tight. Alright, so the flywheel has a keyway right here lines up with that keyway right there we coil out the way because it's going to want to try to attack it as it's magnetic the flywheel fits onto a tapered shaft and it tightens in a clockwise fashion I like to use a 3 8 impact Putting these on, just because it doesn't have a whole lot of power. Mine doesn't. Um, little Husky brand, uh, half inch. Just put it on. I suppose if I can hold it with my hand, you know it's not that much pressure. So, um, excuse me. The flywheel's on. Now it's time for the coil. Let's get the coil somewhat in place. Turn it so you guys can see me. I got a problem. I lost you guys. I don't know when the battery died. So I'm really hoping that uh, um, I got most of that footage. Anyway, the two T25 bolts that hold the coil in are a thinner diameter than the rest of them. Make sure you don't over tighten them with a uh, impact or something like that. Drop a business card inside there. Turn your flywheel around until the coil pulls in. Grab the coil then and then I usually pull into the regular thickness business card just to make sure it's on both sides. Some people use Loctite on these. I generally don't just because that bolt is so thin. I'm scared that you'll break it taking it back out. This one that I'm tightening right now has the ground wire underneath it. That ground wire attaches to this master control lever back here in the back. And what it does is uh, takes that, this wire here, this ground wire, run through that switch and back up and attach to the body ground. If you connect these two places, it'll stop the spark plug from sparking. So that's how a motor, uh, specifically this type of motor, shuts down. If you didn't have that, it would just keep on going until it ran out of fuel. It's known as your uh, kill circuit. Alright, so this intake boot, always check for cracks in it. 
These are notorious for cracking. And if they do, they'll run extremely hot, extremely lean, and they'll burn up a cylinder. So, the way it goes on the cylinder, um, there is a nub right here on the bottom that faces the 6 o'clock position on the cylinder. So it has that upward angle coming up to the air filter and the carburetor. So you're going to try to squeeze this in here. You can put it on ahead of time if you think about it, like I did not. I'm going to feed this one through from the front. I'm just going to squeeze it and compress it and basically fish it down into the hole. I have to work it through from this side. Drop my clamp in there as I'm feeding it through. Feed that clamp up on the boot when it's accessible. And then keep massaging the boot into place. Make sure that those two holes or two divots in the uh, uh, grommet line up with these two. And then tighten up the clamp. Alright, that boot is on. Go ahead and get this cover on. This oil line and back into here. I'm remembering that we had an oil leak, so the oil pump filter goes on like that. And there was a groove that makes this face straight down, right into that groove down there. So basically it sits in there like that. Drop it through. And just basically work that grommet until it drops seats in place. Then it should look something like that. Like a number nine. It looks a lot dirtier on camera, I promise. But I hate working on dirty saws like this. I just can't get it to come clean. I probably could have gave it a bath in gasoline, let it soak for a while, um, but I'm not sure I want to do that right now. Let's get this oil pump as clean as possible. Yeah, this is a lot more than just um, wood debris, you know, dust and everything. I'm pretty sure that this was uh, smoke. 
not a big deal. I mean, it's going to have, you know, a cleaning and it's going to be put back together. So not a big deal, but kind of gives the impression that I'm working on dirty stuff. Okay, let's talk about this oil pump real quick. Um, this oil pump sits on there like that. It has a gear that comes through it. So as this gear is spinning around, it's turning that gear. So, am I focusing in the right spot? All right. So as this gear is turning around, I'm spinning. I'm spinning this wire on the back side. So as that gear is turning around, and I'll show you what drives that here in a second. Um, as that's spinning around, it's turning this gear, this silver gear here at the bottom. All right, that silver gear at the bottom is connected to a shaft that comes all the way through over here. It's a round shaft with a flat spot on it. So every time that flat spot passes through the spot that has the oil, it grabs some of that oil, keeps turning, and pushes it up through the spot up here that goes through to the oiler on the bar, All right? So it's the turning of the engine spinning this. Um, on this one, it happens to be the clutch, and I'll show you how it, how it meshes up. But the clutch is turning. It turns that gear or that wire. That wire turns that plastic gear. That plastic gear turns this metal gear. It takes this oil pump and spins it. Like I said, it's it's mostly round shaft with a flat spot on it. And as it's turning, it's just basically grabbing oil from one and pushing it up to the other. And that's basically the oil pump. So, if it's leaking, it could be the pump itself. It could be that grommet right there. Or it could be that grommet right there. Those two pieces of rubber grommet are what mashes up to these two pieces that keeps it from leaking. So, anyway, that's my tech tip for the day. mash that so that it's flat into those pieces just tighten those up evenly Should be oil pump next. Really confident. Yeah. Should be oil pump next. It goes with the teeth in. Doesn't need lubrication. I'm just cleaning some of the dirt off. All right, just make sure it drops in and can turn. Let's get the clutch band on there before we get too far just to make sure that I don't cover up too much stuff and it forces me to have an issue I don't remember the order I took it off okay. should drop into that groove up there rotate around here Push into that groove right there. Let's see if y'all really can see that. There's some grooves in the metal that all this lines up with, and it drops up into that groove right there. Well, wait, if that goes down and that's on that side, that means that piece goes next. Alright, so that piece goes next. This piece goes on counterclockwise tightening. All right, remember this one's counterclockwise, so it goes the wrong direction. Generally some good hits like that will be enough 
that felt like it was uh, needing some compression. I'm going to go ahead and put the spark plug in and try it again. There we go. That felt better. So next should be that roller bearing. Clutch roller bearing is what it's called. Clutch roller bearing. And then your drum has a groove in it right there. That groove lines up with that. Um, wire on that oil pump I showed you earlier so if it doesn't line up the, it won't drop completely in there so it kind of forces you to line it up Let's take that off for a second see if I can make it make contact There we go. All right, took a little bit of finagling. All right, now we can get that clutch bearing in there. Just like that. That goes on there. Nope, it doesn't. Drop this. This on first. This is your sprocket, your seven, uh, seven pin, three eighths dash seven. Um, oh my gosh, uh, rim sprocket, uh, rim sprocket. Sorry. So you drop your rim sprocket on there, then that, then this. You guys ever taken something apart and come back a while later and have to? really concentrate on where everything came from <laughs> it's usually something I'm pretty good at but for whatever reason All right, so this piece you can tell by the the char that's on here like I said it's not normal um, wood cutting wood or sawdust some of it is but most of it is I bet you it was from a, a fire. I don't think it got burnt up in a fire. I think it was used working a fire. So like the smoke had an opportunity to get in it. I'm kind of curious how it ran when it was doing that. So you think about it, there's not much oxygen in smoke. And it will mess with the mixture quite a bit. You know what? The firemen are saving my family. I hope that they do anything that they need to do. I don't mind picking up the pieces after the end. Those are the true heroes. And I'm fortunate enough to say that I have some in my family. If you haven't thanked a fireman lately, do so. Those guys deserve it. The screws in, they go through that gasket and through that shield. This one on the left is the hardest one, so if I'm going to drop one, I'd rather drop the one on the right. I'm going to start the one on the left first. There we go.
Okay. That was a fight. She did not want to go in there. I'm guessing that the uh, muffler was twisted, or maybe this uh, cover slightly didn't line up because it was it was kind of shifted, um, and all the screws were loose when I took it apart. So I'm guessing that they put it together somewhat. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm done guessing. I don't know. Um, all right, let's get the uh, the exhaust side. Let's get the intake side. Alright, so we're going to make sure that uh, the impulse line that drives the fuel pump and the fuel line line up like they're supposed to into these two holes. Um, almost did it again. So that goes on first. That holds that uh, gasket straight goes on second and that holds everything centered keeps it from mashing out that's our gasket that seals up on this surface right here make sure that these lines go in where they belong looks like that fuel line needs to come up a little bit like that make sure those line up where they belong it all the way in. Okay. This should hook like that into that throttle lever. Oh, there we go. That goes on like that. This little rubber grommet slides into the plastic on the bottom of the saw. Throttle lever, squeeze the throttle lever, push this bar down and snap it into that groove. Make sure that works. Make sure all that works. And the plastic goes next. Place. There we go. Then these little tits there drop into that groove like that. Two eight millimeter or five sixteenths nuts. Okay, before you leave this area, make sure everything works like it's supposed to. Okay. And this one comes across that side. Let's get this top. 
top cover on. A giant mess left behind so I'm cleaning up of the case to do uh, that feels pretty good let me get some gas in it get some oil in it fire it off problem is I can't really tune it because uh, he didn't drop off a bar and chain with it so it's gonna be hard to tune the saw but I plan on uh, running a little bit rich of an oil mixture on the, for the break-in. I'm going to verify that it's oiling, that I've got oil coming out of it. I'm going to listen for a, just making sure it doesn't bog down. And ideally you don't want to adjust too much on the carburetor. Um, I mean you want to keep it running rich while it's doing its break-in. But I fully expect after about two tanks of gas that it needs an additional carburetor adjustment to get it just about right. Um, that's about normal for what I've seen. So on a, on a brand new uh, piston and cylinder, gives the rings a chance to seat in, wear off some of that cross hatching. I'm not quite dressed for uh, getting this thing out here tonight. So I think for tonight the video is done. Um, for you guys it'll only be a minute or so. But um, maybe tomorrow when it's only 100 degrees. I uh, might give this thing a chance to fire it up. So, see you guys in the morning. Or maybe the afternoon. Alright, I planned on using, uh, or waiting until tomorrow. Uh, I gave it a couple of uh, pulls just to see how it was going to pull over with the new gas and everything in it. And it started immediately. So, uh, let's just take it outside and see how it fires up and runs. Like I said, without a bar, I'm not going to be able to show you guys much as far as tuning. Um, let's see what it does. I didn't just, like I said, I didn't expect it to start off that quick, so let's just go back to uh, run. looking for the oiling thinking it was gonna, I was gonna see it up here and then strip it on the ground instead so. I think it's a winner. Yeah, she was coming out the oiler, but it was coming further back than I could see, so it was dripping on my feet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, it's running pretty good. Anyway, I give them a call, have them uh, try this thing out, and uh, see what's see what's going on. You guys got anything out of the video? Enjoyed it? Really appreciate a thumbs up or a subscribe helps the channel tremendously. As always, thanks for tuning in, and see you on the next one.